Hi, this is Ron Darling. Uh, this is Skip Lockwood. Hi, I'm Ron Swoboda of the 69 New York Mets, and you're listening to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. Hello and welcome to another edition of Mets Musings, number 501. I want to thank you all who uh, tuned in or listened to uh, episode 500. It's still up there. You can listen to it over and over and over and over again if you like, along with all the other episodes of Mets Musings, and uh, especially the interviews. There's some great interviews up there online. So uh, please go check them out. It's uh, you know very important uh, that you uh, keep it up, watching and listening to Matt's musings. Uh, not a lot. I mean, there's a lot of updates and stuff. No hard news coming out of the camps. So uh, we will tell you this. So the Cody Senga made his first start. And it looked pretty good. He struggled the first inning or so, uh, calmed down, and then, uh, uh, you know, looked very good after that. And he said that uh, through an interpreter that he was concerned. He was excited to be in a real game, and he was concerned a little bit about the, uh, the time clock and that he felt himself rushing through a little bit. And once he got that under control and got a grip on that, uh, he settled down and pitched very well. And Buck Walter was uh, uh, very happy uh, with his performance. And so Seng is on the books. Uh, Verlander was sharp in his uh, second, I think it was his second or third outing. Uh, just the other day, he looked very good in uh, his performance. Scherzer struggled a little bit, looked good, but had a little bit of trouble with the uh, the def- defense, struggled a little bit, um, oh, pardon me, behind Scherzer. Uh, but as we start now, the injury bug is, is hitting the Mets slightly, and uh, Jose Quintana was diagnosed with a rib stress fracture after suffering from tightness in his side during a spring training game on March 5th. He underwent imaging that revealed a small stress fracture on his fifth rib on his left side. He'll be, uh, he traveled to New York where they did uh, further testing and agreed with that diagnostic and uh, so Quintana is uh, on the bench, so to speak. He was on Columbia's roster for the World Baseball Classic, but he announced in an Instagram post that he won't be participating in the tournament uh, uh, due to this injury. Now, is it a big deal? Of course it is. It's always a big deal when you get a, a, a pitcher that you, you were counting on and he gets hurt. But in the grand scheme of things, I think that the Mets have made an effort to be uh, deep. And the reason to be deep was to force situations like this. Of course, in uh, that same day or the day before that David Peterson got hit on the foot, he's fine. We'll have a little report on him. And he's going to have a big opportunity now because he could fulfill that lefty in the rotation spot. That was uh, Quintana's job. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't work with Peterson, McGill is there, and there are some other choices, Hernandez, uh, Lucchese. Uh, so there is some backup. That that being said, you know, you hate to lose somebody like uh, Quintana. Um, no timetable has been released by the team as of yet. 
these things usually take a few weeks. I mean, they're saying the end of April or mid-April. I I would look. I think that's very optimistic. Uh, it could be mid-May before we see him. Maybe he's a fast healer. Maybe we will see him in April. But I would tend to think it would be more towards the uh, middle of May uh, or the beginning of May in that, uh, you know, he, he has to, um, first off, he's got to heal. So we don't know how bad this stress fracture is. Could be a little tiny thing. It could be worse. It could take him two weeks to heal that up. It could take him a month. Who knows? Uh, but let's assume it, it. You know, it's two weeks, and then he's got to get it build up his arm strength again. So that's going to be another three to four weeks. So we're looking at six to eight weeks, I would think, technically. Uh, and usually these injuries take about that long to heal. Now, of course, uh, it's not unsimilar to uh, what Chris Sale went through last year in spring training, and he was out until, what, July, I think. so. Um, but we, that's the worst case, and the uh, best case would probably be April, the uh, mid to end of April to see Jose Quintana. It's just a shame because he was so durable, and uh, coming over to a new team, you want to impress and uh, this pops up right away, and it's really, really quite a shame. But, uh, you know, we'll get through this. He'll get through it, and um, that'll be that. And and we'll move on. Hope he stay healthy the rest of the season. Uh, you know, uh, and as I said, David Peterson now has a big chance uh, he is, he's considered day to day. He had a foot contusion after the results of an X-ray and CT scan. He's fine. He's gonna probably move into that spot. He's pitched well, and uh, so far in spring training, and um, you know, with him, as I said, and Tyler McGill, Joey Lucchese, the Mets are pretty th thick, and in that. Should not miss uh, Quintana too much. At least they have somebody uh, and decent to uh, put in in his place. So um, that's another good sign. And the Mets announced that Saturday that the left-handed reliever Brooks Raley was removed from Team USA roster for the World Baseball Classic after experiencing tightness in his left hamstring. Rarely underwent imaging on Friday, and the images showed a low-grade hamstring strain, the club said. The 34-year-old will return to Port St. Lucie. There was no update on a timeline for his return at this time. And that's always a tough thing, those hamstring strains. You don't want to uh, push it too much and, and uh, you know, risk further injury. So uh, it, it may... You know, it, it, sometimes it just makes sense that you allow these guys to uh, take time and heal up. You know, uh, with Quintana and now with Rayleigh and, uh, you know, let them heal. There's no rush to get them in. We have the backups. We have people that can play the game. Uh, again, you have Lucchese, McGill, Peterson. They can go. One can go in rotation. One can be in the bullpen. I mean, whatever the combination, it has to be. Uh, it can be done, and it should be done. And uh, the Mets are in a you know a deep enough spot now. Don't rush these guys back. I know what people say. You can't win the division in April, but you can lose it. Very true, but but you really need them down the stretch. So let's keep these guys healthy. Let's get them healthy and keep them healthy the rest of the season. And then we don't have to worry about uh, anything going on at all. All right, we got a, a rant today from uh, my good friend Jeff. And, you know, I got to say I agree with him. 
a lot is being said about the Mets pitching staff and that it's old and, and you know, guys getting hurt. I know we just went through a couple of injuries to guys. But uh, Jeff makes a good point, and let's hear what he has to say. He writes, I can't help it, but would these writers, analysts, commentators, and content creators please stop saying the Mets pitching staff is old? Yes, we all know the ages of the pitchers, but that does not mean that they are more or less likely to get hurt. Did we forget Matt Harvey, age 25, uh, missed the season due to injury and only started 35 games in his age 27 to 28 season. Zach Wheeler, age 25 and 26, missed two seasons, started only 17 games in age 27 season. Jacob DeGrom missed time in 2016 and, of course, 2021 and 2022. Steven Metz, age 26, season started only 13 games. Uh, Noah Syndergaard, age 24, season started only seventh game and missed 2020 and basically all of two innings in 2020, uh, 2021 at age 28, all in their 20s and they got hurt. So please can we ease up with the age and, and more focus on their ability. And that comes from, of course, my good buddy Jeff of Baseball and BBQ. Uh, Jeff, I, I agree wholeheartedly with you. You know, let's, let's uh, you know, um, yeah, Verlander is 40 years old, 39, 40 years old, but he just had Tommy John surgery two years ago. So his arm is uh, a lot sounder than that. Uh, Scherzer missed some time last year, but is it anything to do with age or, you know, just fluke injuries? I mean, DeGrom missed time, and he's uh, eight years younger than uh, uh, either one of those guys. Um, DeGrom's missing time now, hasn't even pitched in a game yet. He's just pitched batting practice, and uh, for the first time, live batting practice, and uh, came out of it pretty good and felt good, but the point is he's he's 34 or whatever, and uh, these guys are five to six years older than him, and they're in there throwing. This it's it. Look, a lot depends upon genetics, mechanics, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, geez, look at Nolan Ryan. I think he could still be pitching at 70. So. <laughs> Who knows? You don't know. But uh, uh, good rant. Thanks, Jeff, for uh, contributing, as always, to the show. And uh, we are going to take a quick break and be back after this message. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of... Oh, what's going on here? Try it. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com. Did you know that Baseball PhD can be heard on BaseballTalkRadio.com? Our shows rotate with other top baseball podcasts. Now, don't forget, that's BaseballTalkRadio.com. With us, we'll help you get a Ph.D. in life through baseball. With BaseballTalkRadio.com, you'll hear the rest of the excellent universe of baseball podcasts. Hello, baseball fans. You're listening to Baseball Talk Radio, the home of great baseball talk shows. At BaseballTalkRadio.com, you're going to find great shows like this one with the great Gary Mack and the Mets Musings Podcast. And now back to the show. All right, we're back. And uh, just a few other notes before we go. Uh, 
Uh, Stalling Mate made his first appearance in spring. <laughs> it looked pretty good. Got a couple hits, including a home run uh, yesterday. And Brandon Nimmo is uh, due to make his first debut uh, in spring uh, tomorrow, I believe, uh, on the in the game. So uh, Nimmo is healthy. Don't don't think about that. Uh, but he's taking things slow. And expected to return uh, again, as I said, tomorrow. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, he just wants to take it easy. It's a long season, and he doesn't want to rush it. Monte is coming off a of surgery, and that's why he has been taking it slow as well. But looked good uh, yesterday. He played, I believe, in his first game, and as I said, hit a home run, got a couple, hit a double, I believe he hit, and uh, he looked very good. Uh, Show Walter is very impressed with uh, a right handed pitcher that the Mets picked up off of the Yankees roster or waiver list, and that is Stephen Ridings. Uh, he missed all of the 2022 season due to various injuries, including a lat injury while rehabbing it in the minors in September. Showalter said that Ridings has big stuff, and the team is working on the same things that the Yankees tried to unlock. He's doing well, Showalter said. That's the one that if somehow we could get him healthy, he'll get a chance to help us. He added the whole goal is for him to be a healthy pitcher at the end of spring. And that's pretty much the goal for everybody is to be healthy at the end of spring and go into the regular season healthy, happy, and uh, on a roll, hopefully, uh, as they move into the season. And uh, that's about it for this episode of Mets Musings. Another short one. Um, working on lining up some guests for the rest of the uh, off-season and, of course, right into the season where we'll try to have on uh, guests every week for analysis and uh, usually from uh, the team coming in that w next weekend or so. But uh, we're going to wrap this one up. And, again, I want to thank everybody for uh, their loyalty and uh, listening and or watching on YouTube, our YouTube channel. And uh, I urge you all to please, if you have not done already, subscribe and uh, hit the like button on YouTube, that bell underneath, hit that. And uh, that way you'll always know when another edition of Mets Musing has come out. Same thing on uh, Anchor or Spotify, whatever it is now, whoever's in control of them. Uh, hit the subscribe button so that way you will know, always know when a new episode is. Or on any of your social, your media sites. Uh, we are on them all. We are on Spotify, Google Play. Uh, what else is there? Um, Apple Podcasts. Uh, <laughs> I can't even think of them all. There's so many, so go check them out. And uh, chances are you will find Mets Musings there. And uh, I guess that wraps it up for this week's show. Yeah. Oh, already? All right. Well, as always, next week. So <laughs> on. Till next time, remember to keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets. And I'm Gary Mack, and I will see you next time on another edition of Mets Musings. <laughs>